webinar on best practices for certificate programs. We are hearing from many of you that you're planning new certificate programs, so this is a timely session for us. As Chuck shares today, drop any questions or comments you have into the chat box for Matthew and me. We are recording this session. You'll have access to the recording and the slides tomorrow on our website in the webinar archives. And please be sure to respond to our survey questions that will be available to you when you close out of today's session. Chuck, I know you have a lot of content to cover, so let's get started. Very good. Well, thank you, Sharon, and <clears throat> welcome. I've, uh, I apologize. I'm hacking and wheezing. I tried to wolf down a uh, peanut butter uh, uh, cup, and it's some of the peanut butter somewhere got caught in the system. So let's move on to certificate programs. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, this seems to be a hot topic nowadays. So we, we've done uh, one on this topic before, but we're, we're going to do an update. And Certainly, I know some of you do run certificate programs, but I would like to review for those who might be new to this area <clears throat> some of the definitions. We'll talk about possible characteristics and, and again, uh, the how would you set it up, uh, what would or why would you set it up, what are the benefits to you or your clients, uh, talk about some of the mechanics of it. And I want to really focus on the wizard, the certificate wizard, which has been kind of a sleeping uh, uh, giant in the system that I think can really be of value as you build out a certificate program, especially one that might be complicated involving multiple, uh, multiple groups of courses, you know, required courses, elective courses, this kind of thing. Want to talk about a certificate community <clears throat> in terms of how you might build this out to be more than just you know two or three courses that you're putting together in a bundle, if you would, and certainly talk about tips for for management. So, with that, let's get underway. As always, write your questions in the chat box. We'll pause uh, <clears throat> uh, occasionally, and we'll certainly have questions at the end. So. What is the difference? And I think we talk about certificate and certificate programs. Uh, I don't know whether a certificate, again, we, we've got certificate reporting, certificate templates in manager, but those are typically, uh, some people call them happy sheets where you, you take one class and you are awarded a certificate that Chuck Havlicek has successfully completed the requirements for a course ABC which is basically showing up at the last day of class to get the certificate. Uh, certificate program, you're basically building in additional requirements. Uh, probably the biggest thing is that you must complete multiple courses in order to earn the certificate. And I suppose most everybody's done a degree from some educational institution. It's a course of study if you're going to major in uh, get a degree in civil engineering, you're going to need so many math classes and so many engineering classes and so many classes in, I don't know, physics. I'm not an engineer. so. <clears throat> but the idea that you must have certain courses in your history in order to be considered um, worthy of this certificate. Uh, the other thing about certificate programs in the non-credit mode, just like in a college program, where if you're going to take a degree in arts and sciences, you need so many hours in humanities and so many hours in the, in the science and so many hours in the, I don't know, I'm, I'm struggling at college of education, whatever, the different groups of courses you need uh, in order to complete certificate. So again, more complicated, more details. And the idea for your students, uh, well, we'll cover into that some more. And so the idea, how do you know when you've met the certificate criteria? There's a couple of, again, every certificate can be different. There is no rule. There is no common denominator on that. <clears throat> Most of the time, uh, certificate programs are set up where you have to take X courses out of Y, six out of 10 courses. Or you might do it by the number of hours or the length of the class, the number of hours it meets CEUs or credits earned. 
<clears throat> and again, the beauty of a certificate program for most of us in this business is that we can probably find courses in our existing inventory, which you can keep open for the general public and make those as part of your particular certificate. Just like English 101 might be a course that you take, whether you're taking a degree in arts and sciences or agriculture or business or, or chemistry, you need to take English. Um, a given course in your, in your offering might be available as a re required or elective course in any number of certificate programs. <clears throat> so again, uh, you can set up what are the groups of courses that qualify and whatever, however you might want to set up your tier groups. And we'll give you a couple examples later so you can at least, you know, have some solid example of a real quote, quote certificate that you can uh, consider. <clears throat> so again, that, the, the, the point of this is there is not one given perfect structure of a certificate program. It depends on your clientele, your programs, and again, the needs and situation that, that you're dealing with. Why offer certificate programs? Well, the idea is, is it to fulfill a need. And whether it's of local organizations or businesses, uh, whether it's of, for your students that you're, you're trying to offer students in your courses uh, a more significant, a more momentous learning achievement credential. I guess it's really kind of trying to create a credential <clears throat> that you can build some gravitas, you can build some, uh, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say, some uh, uh, stature to that particular certificate. Uh, uh, allow you to do some promotion of your programs. Uh, if you, you know, obviously creating something new, hey, new program at the university on topic A, you know, build these courses and you'll develop skills in being able to jump over tall buildings in a single bound, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea, it gives you something to, to toot your horn about. Uh, you can raise awareness of those programs in your current catalog. Uh, encourage individual course takers to commit to taking more classes, <clears throat> help uh, build professional networks, building a learner community within your non-credit students typically. And certainly the bottom line is uh, sell more soap. And again, if you to fulfill a need, uh, I think that some schools have been able to successfully bump up their enrollments by building out certificate programs. So uh, why do you offer it again? Now, filling the need, and that could be certainly your students, and it could be you, you know, to be able to try to encourage participation in your programs. Best reason for it? Well, we like to think student manager makes it easy. And, and again, uh, there, there is no button in student manager that says here is a certificate program. It's that we've got the tools set up that you can create. It's more of a, like I said, hammer, saw, nail, <clears throat> and uh, we can help you build out a set of plans to put a certificate program in place. All right, so um, what are the considerations that you might have in building a certificate program? Well, certainly if we're in the business and, and what we're in, we generally try to create something that somebody wants or needs. And so again, <clears throat> how do you know that? Uh, is there a skill by local, uh, something needed by your local employers, local businesses? Um, uh, this is actually some notes that I, I took from a presentation, Mary Corley from Tri-County Tech and I put on earlier in the, fall. <clears throat> Again, ESMI data, economic modeling data, uh, looking at industry publications, current hot topics, and certainly the, the most important probably is input from your customers. Who are the local employers? Uh, if you've got an advisory board or students with uh, you think are savvy as to what's happening in the, in the industry, get their input. <clears throat> Um, is it something that you can tie into NASH third-party certification? And Tri-County does a lot of this with technical training uh, requirements. 
uh, various state licensing boards. If you've got a real estate uh, contracting uh, human resources group in the area that you could work with to identify combinations of your existing courses that you can bundle, uh, you know, package, create this larger value. It's kind of, I don't know, what's the word? Synergy, it's overused. But by putting together these multiple courses, you kind of say, well, by adding this, this, this together, you're going to come up with a more valuable learning experience and for the student, be more valuable in the industry and for the industry that's looking at these students is say, you know, this kind of certifies, that's what it says, certifies that this particular student has got certain skills that you're going to be able to benefit from in your business. <clears throat> Examples of packaging existing courses, again, and, and we're getting back to the idea that you've got a, va a valuable inventory of existing programs. How can you pick those courses together based on what you know about needs of the community and, and, and uh, marketable, packageable sets of learning experiences that you can offer? And uh, Tri-County Tech had the example of a patient care technician. <clears throat> uh, here are some other examples, and again, I've got a link here. This is an actual offering by Austin Community College where uh, a webmaster certificate, you would have eight required courses, three electives, and the sample courses that would make up this certificate would be a variety of web publishing courses. Uh, another example from University, the University of North Georgia, and shout out, they are a student manager user, and they're using the hours approach. You earn 60 hours of courses in a approved set of course offerings, and you'll get this master certificate. <clears throat> and again, that's again, mastery, master, master certificate, uh, that is another keyword that can be a nice marketing word that kind of helps bump up the significance of the word certificate. As we said earlier, it gets kind of bounced around in a, oh yes, certificate, it gets on the wall, there's a ton of them in my desk drawer, but you know, something that is more meaningful and more significant. Another one is, uh, here's one at uh, KU, our neighbor down the road, <clears throat> Life Cycle Reliable Ability Engineering. And that one actually is a four required, I think they're two week courses. So those are significant courses in and of themselves and a work product. So they actually, and I assume this is a college of engineering, you know, have kind of a paper or project that has to be done in order to again qualify or signify that they've they've earned this element. So again, don't see any questions, we'll keep on going. So how do you go about setting this up? Well, one of the first questions, uh, once you've kind of done the research, you've looked at the kind of courses that you think you can bundle together into a certificate group offering uh, package, uh, or a, a, a curriculum, if you would, for that certificate. You say, how are we going to manage enrollments? Uh, will there be an application in and of itself? Uh, will there be a fee for that application? <clears throat> um, do you, how are you going to identify the certificate enrollees? And again, if you're enrolling in a course, that's kind of easy. You'll have that course reference, but maybe you're not doing a course. You'll, you'll need some way to do individuals in your database. What will be the criteria? <clears throat> and again, the criteria here would be, again, 80 hours of courses in a group of courses, uh, completing a certain number of courses. Uh, doing some number of courses and a project. Uh, is there a test involved? So, you know, what's the criteria? You're going to need to explain that to your audience that you're trying to sell this to. Are there course prerequisites and how will they be enforced? And again, manager has the ability to identify prerequisites <clears throat> and uh, on the web they can be either hard or uh, soft, if you would, prerequisites. And then how will you indicate a completer? You know, what is that capstone record that you're gonna to have to actually indicate that uh, Chuck Havlicek is a successful master of such and such? All right, so how do you do this? The key in student manager in doing managing a certificate program is to use course grouping codes. 
And again, for those of you familiar with Manager, course grouping codes are typically what you use to identify where that course will be displayed on your website in your category groups of courses, you know, uh, arts and humanities courses, <clears throat> cooking courses, outdoor adventure courses, courses in business, courses in engineering, et cetera. It's the grouping codes that display in those categories you're gonna have on your website. You can also use grouping codes for this purpose, to code classes to report on. And that's basically the primary interest or the, what we're going to be using grouping code codes in this case. And so the idea is that you'll create a grouping code for each certificate program and assign that grouping code to the classes that are eligible for counting, for credit, if you would, for completion of the certificate. If you're going to be doing, again, for the name uh, records to track the students, we recommend using an interest code. Again, if you're gonna create a course that is a, um, you have to apply to a course and purchase a, uh, uh, you know, an application fee or you have to submit an application fee to be in the certificate, <clears throat> uh, you can add a subject code to that course. If you're not, you can just certainly tag that student who says, I'm, I want to participate in the program with a unique interest code. Uh, grouping code design. And again, um, this is really critical. It's the coding of the design. Grouping codes are six digits long. <clears throat> and so um, our recommendation on this is that you, if you're going to use a multi-tier approach, or even, you know, whether it's a single tier, all you need is just uh, one, you just need a single code. But if you're going to use a multi-tiered approach, you have, you have required classes, we'll call them tier one. Uh, you give those classes a unique code. And then if you have a second requirement group, or this is the elective group, create a second code to apply to all of those courses that would fall in the elective category. <clears throat> One of the things we recommend is that we think is critical. If you're, as you're building this code, um, make sure that you have your tier one, two, three uh, sorted so that um, they're alphabetically the codes for your foundation classes will sort out before the codes for the mid level or the elective courses. And the reason for that is that in reporting, uh, when you're doing reporting, it gives you a logical display so the student can see, here's my required courses, here's my secondary courses, and here are my electives. Uh, they'll be displayed, um, it'll be easier for the student to follow that as you're doing reports for them. Uh, again, on the grouping codes, grouping codes, the little code, that six digit code is internal. So again, don't worry about making those necessarily to make sense for the public, it's mainly you and your staff <clears throat> that <clears throat> you create that rubric, that code set uh, that makes sense to you and helps you differentiate between different courses. <clears throat> Again, creating grouping codes, module codes, grouping codes, um, and again, depending on how you put your certificate together and what courses are included, you may or may not want to create an ACE web grouping. In other words, a section on ACE web that has the all of these codes or all of these courses in one area. And so this question, do not display courses on ACE web is where you make that decision. Is this going to be kind of an internal set of codes or does this also match up to how the courses might be displayed on ACEWeb. And that's, again, feel free to contact your tech and, and kind of, uh, you know, discuss what might be the best approach on that. <clears throat> Sharon, questions? How are we doing so far? Seems to be people... Do you have a question related to grouping codes that would be good for the benefit of the group here. Mm -hmm. Nancy asks, can you have multiple grouping codes on a single class? Again, absolutely. And, and again, I, we, we gave the example of an English 101, freshman English. That could be a requirement for about every major that you'd ever take 
from the university of whatever, uh, a basic class in your non-credit area, in your case, Nancy, a basic tree biology class might be a required class in a multiple different sets of certificates. It could be a required for some courses. You could have it as a elective for other classes. And again, uh, down in this grouping code, you can add as many different grouping codes to one course as you can as you want. So again, uh, you can absolutely include it, uh, you know, like I said, in multiple, in multiple certificates. Now, the rub on that is if you're really trying to sell classes, the idea is that, well, if you let person take one class and apply that to 12 different certificates, are you losing out on an opportunity to sell another unique class? And that gets into some other <clears throat> discussions on that. But yeah, in terms of operationally in manager, you can absolutely do that. Uh, strategically for you as a program, that, that's kind of a decision to, to, to decide as to, you know, how much are you going to let that one basic English course be applied to five different majors that you might be offering as a program. Um, and again, <clears throat> if you have a grouping code that is a certificate program code that you're putting on a course that you're not displaying on the web, you really, you must also have a public uh, you know, web display grouping code on that course, obviously, to get it get it to show on the web. Um, and as you said before, you can use the same grouping code for web display and certificate management if that matches kind of how your marketing and your course uh, certificate is set up. <clears throat> how are we doing? Sharon, did that help you think? That was helpful. Carry on. All right, interest codes, and obviously creating interest codes, the idea of making unique interest code for your certificate program. <clears throat> and again, uh, remember as you're building interest codes, you have the option to hide those interest codes on AceWeb. Um, and again, you may or may not want those setting in that AceWeb dropdown where you create a new account and the student can say, well, send me information on programs. Uh, actually, uh, unless this is some obtuse internal code, you might want to have an option on your on your on your website to to indicate, hey, I'm interested. Send me information about the program. <clears throat> so that's certainly um, up to you again. Tracking completers. Okay, um, one of the the big deals, obviously, is if once you get the program up, it's going gangbusters. You got uh, Johnny Gung Ho and Susie Gung Ho, who's got all those courses done, and you want to give them uh, the completer code so that you're not reporting them as you're trying to manage people who are going through the program. In other words, separating your graduates from your folks who are still are struggling in the classroom in the lab. Generally, we recommend using credentials or the testing area. And uh, there is a, a, a unique little piece about this. In order for this to work, the code that you create for the testing type needs to be cert comp. We may end up tweaking that down the road. Um, we're doing some major rethinking of the how we might better uh, help guys manage certificates. But for right now, in order to manage completers, uh, you'd need to use the code for the certificate. The credential is CERTCOM. You can label it however you want. But the idea that you add, uh, if, if Charles Havlicek has completed the certificate, you add a credential called CERTCOM, and then in the title, in, in the credential title, you would type in, and at this point, you need to match that uh, consistently, ACEWARE management or um, you know, uh, introduction to supervision, uh, spell that out the same, and that will be the keyword that you can use to exclude the Charles Havlicek graduates from your testing of which students have uh, earned the certificate this semester with the courses they've taken. <clears throat> All right, uh, again, uh, credential option for completers, and again, um, you would add that to their uh, credential to their um, 
to their credential. And again, by adding it in there, then this is in the certificate wizard, which we'll look at in a second. You can ask it to skip those people who have that credential <clears throat> so that you're not sending congratulations out to the people who graduated or completed the certificate last semester, last year. Programs with enrollment fees. And again, if you're assessing a fee in order to even enroll in the program, um, an application fee, if you would, you obviously create a course, um, <clears throat> you would put in the subject code, whatever the interest code that you want to assign to students who are in that program uh, to track those. And again, just as general best practice, we suggest that you create a different certificate application course per act per year, per calendar year, if you would, that kind of helps you manage those in the process. Um, and again, if you don't have enrollment fees, uh, you, well, here we go. If you don't have enrollment fees, you can just certainly add the certificate program's interest code to the person's name record. Uh, of course, uh, the other issue about the benefit of adding uh, a course itself is because then you would have a time frame that you know. So even if you, you might even create a course that says certificate program applications and have it as a zero fee, and you just log the students into that course just as a way of tracking, you know, how many people are in the 2021 cohort of certificate program X. Think about that in a, in a cohort model. Tracking code completers. And again, we, we talked about this in the certificate uh, area. The credential is added to the course. And again, if you want to expire, if you have a certificate that you want to say, whether it's a certificate that you're offering <clears throat> by yourself and you're saying, well, this expires every four years, say, well, in, in web design, you might say, well, the stuff you learned four years ago is really probably out the window if you, you need to renew or you know, re-up every X number of years. Um, <clears throat> certainly, if you're doing a certificate program in cooperation with a professional association, there may be limits on, on when that expiration might be, or there may be an expiration date on a particular credential. One of the things, again, the advantage of having a course that has a, um, a certificate applicants in that course is that when that student completes the credential or completes the certificate requirements, you can use the little button on your registration screen called Make Credential, if you've wondered what that is. Uh, that allows you to pop up a little mini menu that you can put in uh, the credential type. Uh, in this case, the title would be where you'd put in the name of the certificate. You could put in the date it was awarded, probably in date two. Um, institution given is probably uh, not relevant for you. <clears throat> but that would automatically then drop that into the student's uh, credential area. And of course, as we were saying earlier, you can just open the name record and add a credential by going into the credential tab and clicking add new entry. Um, all right, questions on credentialing or, or yeah, using the credential for tracking, we good so far? You're good so far. Uh, all right. Um, course prerequisites. Um, again, uh, I don't know how many of you use prerequisites, but you can certainly set up prerequisites for the courses <clears throat> if you want to have um, uh, certain, you know, an, a foundation course taken before an advanced course is done. Now, a note on this. When you're setting up prerequisites on courses, that applies to any student who is taking that course. Uh, so you cannot set up currently a way to say, well, if you're in the certificate program ABC, you must take this course before you take that course and let the regular ad hoc student who's just coming in to zip into a course 
uh, take that course uh, without being, uh, you know, challenged that they need to have a prerequisite. <clears throat> now, again, when a student is is registering uh, in person or calling on the phone, obviously the registrar staff member they're talking to can negotiate out with them. And the student says, "Well, I'm not in. I don't. I'm not interested in the specific program. I just." I want to take this course and I feel I've had experience that qualifies me and staff member can make that call. On the web though, uh, the web either enforces it or it'll, it, would be a re, it would be a recommended item that the, that the person enrolling on the web independently would be able to be either said, hey, you cannot take this course because you haven't taken the beginning course. <clears throat> uh, so again, that is, uh, it's either hard or fast, it's either on or recommended uh, for web registrations. Um, how to set that up uh, inside your student manager preferences under system would be this idea, you need to check uh, whether student has met prerequisites that will warn the staff member who is registering with phone registrations or mail in or email in uh, if there's a prerequisite that needs to be met. Uh, on the web, there is a ACE web item called cat link status that determines how prerequisites are managed. <clears throat> and again, uh, on the web, there actually are, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, four or uh, six or seven different nuances of how you might manage uh, required courses on the web, and again, in your ACE web help guide or on your ACE web setup, <clears throat> you've got a pretty good set of description of that. Um, setting prerequisites for on the course, you basically would go into the catalog description for the class, and in the prerequisite box, add the catalog description uh, that has to that would fall on a course that would qualify for meeting that particular requirement. Um, and again, uh, this is where uh, on, on the web, if you turn on uh, that you must have a requirement, so it says it, it enforces prerequisites, they have to have that course in their history or they have to have added it to the cart before they can enroll in the current course that has a prerequisite. Um, and I think that if you, don't have the required prerequisite set on ACE web, it would display here are the courses we recommend you take and I think you can also get it to display um, again this this uh, text description. Certificate wizard now here's the one that uh, I'm excited about. I don't know how many of you have actually played with Certificate Wizard, but we're going to give you a chance to, uh, we're gonna demonstrate that for you here today. And it's basically a, um, it's a function, a little black box box function you can add with a just do it to a transcript. And this is basically the reporting area that it's designed to work with, um, and again, there should be in your transcript additional uh, reports a report named Certificate Wizard. If you don't have it, you can take any report in the transcript and add this Just Do It, or you can go to the Student Manager demo, download one, and you'll see a CertWiz report in that demo that you can copy and import or certainly call your tech and they can get you that report. Um, so we're going to go into manager and play with the certificate wizard for the Aceware management certificate. All right, so our management certificate in Aceware says that of the five different Aceware courses, student manager Aceweb courses, you must take three out of these, whatever, six, three out of these six courses. And you must take, since we're calling it a management certificate, two courses out of our management set of elective courses. All right, so required two out of these six, or three out of these six, and two out of these four. All right, so how do we do that? Well, let's jump into manager and get that started. So 
So what we've got is uh, people who have taken who have taken courses. We're going to run the wizard and find out if there's anybody in here who meets the requirements. So reports, registrations, transcripts. Uh, we're going to do additional reports. And when you're doing the certificate wizard, your query is always got to, in, you, you must have something about grouping codes in your query. Now you can certainly have grouping codes and a requirement that courses must have been taken between date X and date Y. So again, you can add qualifiers to this, uh, to your grouping code element, but, but because as we mentioned, the grouping codes tied to the courses are where we're going to do the measurement, the analysis, the verification. That is the that has to be one of the elements in your query. So we're just going to do grouping code begins with on this one, and we cre we have created a set of grouping codes called ACE CERT A C R T. We have ACE CERT A, which are your required courses. A cert B, which is our elective. So we're going to do, and again, because it begins with the ACRT, we're just going to use, we're not going to do either or, we're just going to say, come on, baby. Okay, ACRT. If it begins with ACRT, we want to include those registrations. Okay, so we're including those registrations. We get asked questions, do we want it, this is a typical transcript, do we want to exclude courses that haven't finished? Well, yeah, because we need them to complete that. Do you want to include duplicates? We'll let that happen. And so here I have my certificate wizard report. This is one that's been around. If you've gotten one since 2011, you probably ought to have it in your in your database or in your report database. So here we are now in the certificate wizard. And so we have the two-tier report, right? So what we're looking for is in the required courses, we need to have completed three classes. Now, again, the certificate wizard allows you to choose our CEUs credits. <clears throat> and if you want, you can require a percentage grade, a letter grade, or an attendance percentage as a additional requirement. In other words, they have to have passed or they have to get an 80% score uh, or attendance of so much amount, that would be if you have the attendance um, module, in order to complete the class. So now that we've done that, we have choices. It says one, only use criteria one. All right, if we wanted to stop right there, if you had a simple certificate, where you said you take five classes out of a group of whatever, you're gonna get the certificate, that'd be all you need. We have the two-tier approach. So we also want to know of the ACEWARE elective courses, have we got anybody who has taken two or more classes? All right, we're not gonna bother with the skip business yet. Uh, we're not gonna worry about additional match. This is what we're looking for. So let's give her a rip. Now, if you kind of watch up here, a certificate wizard will give you some messaging as we go along. Okay, 16 registrations met the first, three met the second, two met both, bada boom, two students. So here we go, yours truly, as you, uh, yeah, I'm, oh, I should be in that, and Leslie Ziegler. These are the two people out of my, dozens and dozens or whatever and whatever, who have met the requirements for the certificate. Uh, so at this point, uh, you could go to those records and actually assign them a, um, a credential for completion. We're gonna flip back to this and come back and do some nuances uh, once we get through the rest of the basic elements of this, um, of this certificate, so, all right. So that's how you can use the wizard. Um, if you've got questions, write them down. And like I said, we'll, we'll, we should have time to circle back and do a couple more nuanced elements on that uh, in a second. 
So what are some other things then that we need to be doing on here? Well, uh, before we leave reporting, I do want to reference that we do have some other report functions that you can use uh, with the Just Do It in reports to track performance or achievement in certificate programs. Uh, and again, if you want to read more about them, obviously go to the ACEWARE help guide, the online help guide, uh, put in a, a keyword for that function and you can get the detail on that. Uh, find interest uh, is a cool one to find uh, students who have a certain interest code. Uh, find group, and again, this is a kind of a sleeper function in that it really lets you, if you're using groups, you can use it to generate a report of names, who have been in courses with that grouping code, registrations that are tied to the course with that grouping code, or the courses themselves by the grouping code. Uh, <clears throat> has class, uh, which uh, allows you to report a yes or no if a person has taken a certain class. Uh, grad spec, which is a similar one. Grad spec two allows for multiple course groups, grad credit, this is uh, based on like the number of classes taken three or four classes or two or three classes. Uh, this is grad cred uses the hours or CEUs as a criteria to, to generate that. So um, I wanna cover certificate community before we get into questions and maybe some more examples of the certificate wizard. Uh, and so the idea is that if you want to make your certificate program special, and I think especially if you're going to be charging people for this uh, certificate in order to even enroll, it's kind of like if you want to go to the University of ACE where you got to drop a, a, a $7,000 application fee or 500, whatever application fee to even be considered for this program. So if you're going to ante that, how can you make them feel that they are part of something special, something bigger than just showing up on Tuesday nights for six weeks to take a class? Um, well, one of the things is the idea of how do you encourage students to complete the program? And so again, certainly uh, faculty, staff, and again, most of your staff are adjuncts uh, for most of us in non-credit. Uh, how can you encourage them or how do you certainly, obviously you'd want to engage your instructors uh, to indicate that, hey, uh, Professor Smith or John Jones, who's with foreman of a uh, down at the local factory, your class on supervision is going to be part of a certificate, and some of your students are actually trying to earn this uh, higher level certificate that indicates mastery of skills in being a good employer and a supervisor and helping their uh, their people they work under them to be productive. And, and make sure that instructor knows about the certificate program that their course might be just one part of. And so they can kind of encourage students right there in the classroom to consider signing up for these other classes. Uh, certainly if you're doing partnerships with uh, community partners, uh, professional associations in building out as you design this certificate program, uh, certainly keep in communication with them as to how they might support the program. Um, for uh, some areas that are, again, career related. Uh, if you've got a capstone class or one of your classes in the certificate that you might involve, uh, bring employers into the class uh, at the end of the class and actually do mock slash semi-real interviews with students so that students uh, can kind of get a feel, if this, especially if they're new to the job market, what interviews might be like and how they might, what they might expect when they actually go into uh, the workforce to, to be able to uh, uh, put that certificate to work. Um, certainly using the certificate wizard to check progress and we're gonna circle back and show you how you can do that. Uh, main, uh, here's one, I don't know if anyone is doing this, uh, I don't know UNLV if you're doing this for any of your programs, but creating a mini newsletter that might be focused on courses and activities and participants in one of the certificate programs. Or even if you've got several certificate programs, you could kind of talk about the different ones that's going on 
and just send that, well, make sure it goes to everybody who is enrolled in the program or courses participating in the program, but also you could use it as a soft marketing to the, your general audience every once in a while. Again, uh, using tools in manager, course level email blasts to encourage students to keep going. And here's one that I know, I don't know, I see if, if Clayton State is here. I know some of the Clayton State certificate programs actually have a graduation ceremony, especially if you have a significant certificate that does have a variety of, of uh, requirements that they'll have a formal graduation ceremony. They'll tea and crumpets afterwards and parents and, and um, you know, grandparents and uncles and supervisors are invited to attend uh, to be able to see, you know, Johnny or Joanna be able to uh, walk and get, get their certificate and presented by a dignitary at the college there. So, um, all right, so to kind of wrap on this then, uh, we've talked about the definitions, uh, the, how you go about setting up, kind of validating the need for it, design options and setting this up, some of the tools that you've got, thoughts on community, uh, and general tips. So um, resources, I uh, want to make sure that we've got the online help topics, uh, certificate programs uh, in the help guide. <clears throat> uh, learning about the certificate wizard, uh, report function topics, and again, certainly your ACEWARE tech. So, well, Sharon, I'm going to see if you've got any questions hanging. Otherwise, I'm going to circle back. We got a couple minutes and give you a little bit more of the working elements on uh, the certificate wizard. And having said that, I do want to jump ahead to the uh, next item on the program, which or not the next next month's um, next month's program, which is going to be uh, marketing, um, almost a month from today. So, Sharon, questions? Anything that's hot? That uh, we well, while you get back to you know to the wizard demo. Just want to share that UNLV says they have had ceremonies for their paralegal graduates okay. uh, pre-pandemic, and I encourage them to start thinking about those virtual recognitions Actually, now yeah. too. And so yeah, virtual recognition. So that. shout yeah. out to UNLV, good job. So good. go ahead and show us some different examples, Chuck. Okay, well let's go back to the certificate wizard here. So again, I want to do our A cert, A C R T. Uh, exclude and it include so, so one of the ways you can use the wizard is to find people who are close so you say well okay I know I need three courses to complete but I want to also find out people who are close and so we need uh, two courses in the B side well how many people are within one of both so all right well so we're gonna just change the number of requirements here uh, 30 registrations, three names met the second, uh, there's still only two. Um, those are the ones that met all three. But the point is, you see, is that what it allows you to do, and of course, if you haven't, I'm using the favorite reports and see how quickly I can get back into what I'm doing, CRT. But that you can basically use that use that wizard to identify you know the the people who are close now here's another tool of the wizard number one is that um the i want to return people who have taken two but then and if you noted it said there were like 30 who have taken at least two classes in um in 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 the ace work core group i want to return students who are missing one or more of the core classes well, so, so what are the core classes? Well, what you do is that you enter, and I say this to my uh, function key set, you enter a list of the catalog codes tied to the required courses. I ended up I, with four on this set here. Uh, and again, what you would do is ideally is look at the courses that you're offering in the current term or the upcoming term, 
identify a group of people who have met almost all of the requirements in an area. And then what that will give you is that here are the 12 students who have taken two courses, but they're missing one or more courses in a particular area. And again, what you can do with this report is, of course, download, or you can actually add at the end of this report a call to the email manager, to the, to the uh, mail merge uh, email blast tool, and actually generate an email to them to say, dear partici certificate participant, we see that you have taken at least two courses. Uh, you need one more to meet your base requirements. We have them here. Here they are in the website. Blast it, and you get that out to uh, get that out to the students. Uh, the other tool you can use with the ACE certificate wizard is that you can run and um, you can we can run this group and say I want to skip these people who have completed the certificate and let's just go I'm just going to use the three class requirement here and I say I want certificate management if they have a credential called certificate management or aceware management, I'm going to skip them. Well, who has that? Well, I'm going to show off the F5 key and pull up Havlicek. You see, I can use the F5 key in the middle of whatever I'm doing. And there it is. I have the certificate completed, and I have the aceware management certificate in my credential set. So we can. We'll go on with that and we'll see whether my name shows up in the list of students that are in there. So let's see, let's see, let's see four different students. And I hope I don't see myself in there and I'm not because I said exclude me out of this report. So again, a couple of examples of, um, again, how to use that, that wizard. I will say that uh, we are looking at, and again, uh, we're working with a client who has a three-level certificate. And at this point, as you can see, the certificate does not have a uh, three-level option, but that is something that we're looking at adding is so that you will actually be able to, eh, within, probably a week or two, uh, I won't get that done next week with it being Thanksgiving, but we'll have that ready here by the 1st of December to be able to actually have three sets of criteria to be able to uh, generate a certificate. So, Sharon, I think we've got five minutes. If anyone has questions or comments, or if you have a certificate program that you feel has done well for you, please shout it out if you don't mind sharing it with your colleagues here um, <clears throat> for best practice here. So, Sharon? Mm, quiet group. Lots of thinking going on. You've given them lots of things to think about and lots of great tips to put into their programs, giving them a chance to comment here. Uh, they're quiet. They're thinking. Well, they know when thinking. they start those programs up, um, you guys know where to go with your texts or contact Chuck or I to, if you're wanting some assistance in getting some things set up. We'll be glad to help you get that certificate program up. So, well, good job, Chuck. Lots of things to think about. And, folks, we, we look forward to seeing you again in just about a month um, for marketing with Student Manager and AceWeb. Let's see. Sorry, again, if you know. Okay. So we will look forward to seeing you next month on some marketing tips and tricks with Student Manager and ASAP. Until then, we wish you a great afternoon and a great coming uh, weekend coming up. So right. thanks, everyone, for joining us today, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.